In this video, I want to talk about um, a typical metal or plastic um, pot holder weaving loom and some different options that are available with them. Now, this is a vintage Nellie B pot holder loom. I like the um, metal ones. They come in this green box. There are several different boxes, but they come in that green box called Loopcraft. By, it's by Nellie B. And there's the other older box. That particular loom is wood. Um, this one is the metal one. And um, this is the actual loom. And the reason I like the Nellie B metal loom is because the frame is so narrow that when you're weaving, if you have to maneuver the hook, you have plenty of room to do that. But this isn't really about um, just making pot holders. It's about uh, something a little different. And um, I just dropped something, so let me pick that up. This is a bag of weaving loops that are by the Wool Novelty Company, and those are cotton. And that is a 16 ounce bag, and that will make five pot holders. And if you remember them from years ago, or even these are obviously still made today, these types of loops are um, loose, loosely knit jersey loops, whether they're in cotton or nylon. Um, then there's another company, Alex Toys, which um, makes the Loop and Loom refill loops. Now those I have in the jars, these are nylon, and they're thinner, um, they're a little bit stretchier, and they're nylon. They come in several colors, and they come, I've only found them in the one bag size. It's a five ounce bag. It, and you can see right there, it makes three pot holders. Now, the five ounce bag of these loops is about eight ninety nine. Sometimes you can get the sixteen ounce bag, which makes five, for nine ninety nine. And then sometimes on both of them, you have to pay additional shipping. So it brings um, each pot holder to about. Two dollars if you get a good price, um, two to three dollars a piece for a pot holder. So that's fine, except to me that's a little expensive. Um, so what I've been doing is looking at different ways to make pot holder shape fabric. And um, I had already woven plain squares with normal worsted weight yarn on this loom and I did it in several colors with several different types of um, yarn and for me it, it wove fine and it's a basic way to weave but for me the fabric itself was too, a little thin now I was using I forget what yarn I was using um, specifically that bothered me, but it was like a uh, typical wool yarn. Now this is technically a needlepoint yarn, um, so even this is a little bit heavier. So the the normal weaving method on this for skeins of yarn, um, they're wonderful squares, but I was looking for something with a little bit more substance in the fabric. So what I have come up with is a couple of things. Um, the issue is how much yarn does it take to make your own loops. Um, now I'll get to that in a minute, but here are some of the options you can use. You can use um, strands that you knit on a Knitting Nancy to weave with this loom. And to do that, what I was starting was I just take a strand where I've already tucked the ends in. I stick it on the first peg and then warp this loom like this. 
just using the strand as if it's yarn. So obviously that gives you a very thick fabric. And then, of course, what you would do is warp the loom back and forth in one direction. And then these, um, to weave it through there, you could stick this on there. And then either with your finger, weave over and under, or use the hook that they provide. And then um, what I was going to do was crochet the ends off. And those, all those directions are with um, the, usually with the weaving looms. Now, you might have some minor hand sewing because you're going to have two ends that don't have a loop. So you could just pull them through the last loop and tighten them, but I would tack them down with some hand sewing. So there is about the thickest fabric. Um, that you can make. Knitting Nancy strands used like that. Now those, I haven't measured yardage on the Knitting Nancy strands because when I make these, I make them out of yarns that are left over from other projects. So I never really have a set number of yards um, unless I'm making like a braided rug. Um, this pad right here is uh, Knitting Nancy and then braiding and um, this there's four colors there it's lion bran woolly yarn and there's one full skein of each one and that's only about eight inches across so um, that's why I, you know yardage with knitting nancy's i don't often get into because it, um, it takes a lot of yarn you're making four stitches each time you go around. Now, the same is almost true with lucidating. Now, this is lucided cord, and I'll give you the amounts I have come up with in a moment. Now, on this, I would leave the tail on there, tie it onto the peg, and then warp it. Now, the reason I like lucided cord is because it gives you a square um, cord that if you do this twice by that I mean warp it this way and then weave it through this way over and under that's a wonderfully solid fabric and so far this is my favorite way right now is with lucided cord but when we're talking about the amount of yarn it takes uh, lucided cord and knitting Nancy take a lot of yarn. So then um, another option is to take a G size crochet hook and any any size up to worsted weight yarn below worsted weight so fingering weight, sport weight, light DK and just make crochet chains and you could either tie it on there or just stick this in one of the chains and warp it that way. And again, that makes um, these are almost three thicknesses of fabric you would get. With the Knitting Nancy being the thickest, the Lucided Cord being the second thickest, and even this, you can see if, if I weave that, again, that's a solid fabric. So those are um, those three. I also, um, on my wooden lucid, I did have, uh, and I just, I put it somewhere else, but I have um, loosely lucided, super bulky yarn, and I could even use that. So, the lucid, um, crocheting, or knitting Nancy are all different ways to put um, to replace loops. Now, now there's a reason that I came to um, where I am right now with this. Um, I had kind of this crazy idea of making a potholder quilt or a potholder blanket. If you have um, these older cotton loops or the older style cotton loops and you make a potholder out of them, 
They are soft, squishy, warm, washable. They're perfect. The problem is when I went to buy enough loops to make a twin size quilt, when I priced it all out, getting the best prices on either the cotton or the nylon loops, the nylon make a stiffer pot holder. They're, they're not as nice as cotton loops. But you'll fall over when you hear that to make 140 pot holders was going to cost me $356. And I'll let that sink in for a minute. Three, and I believe me, I've done the math several times. Um, if I make it the size that I normally make them, it was going to be like 456. That's because these companies are getting um, roughly 8.99 or 9.99 a bag for um, either three or five pot holders. So I mean that's ridiculous. If you have a child who wants to make pot holders for a project, and you buy ten uh, two bags and they make ten pot holders, you're spending twenty dollars and they make their ten pot holders. And then nobody thinks about potholders for a while. So that that situation is fine. But if you actually like these type of weaving looms and are thinking of more creative ways to use potholder squares, rugs, um, you know, floor rugs anywhere, floor mats anywhere, I have a dog. I mean, I could throw the whole thing in the wash if I made a small, um, if I made all these throw rugs for the dog, made four or five to have around the house, they'd be wonderful. I'd be talking 150 almost $200. So all of a sudden, this wonderful loom that many of us have known all through our childhood is becoming too pricey. Now, Harrisville Designs, I have two of their weaving looms, and I love Harrisville Designs. They have potholder looms, and their cotton loops only fit their looms and are more expensive even than these cheap ones. So that annoyed me. Um, and then... The whole thing was like, well, okay, this was kind of a silly idea to begin with, making a potholder quilt. Um, it was just going to be kind of like, you know, an artsy kind of quilt. But then, off and on, I still keep thinking about this. The other day, I got this loom out to do something else, and I was like, oh yeah, the potholder quilt. And again, I priced it out. Again, it came out to like 300 and something dollars. So that is why I started thinking, well, wait a minute, I have other ways to do this. Now this is a five pound cone of cotton string, and I have talked about this string a couple of times. Um, it's sport weight when you think of it as yarn. On this five pound cone, which with the shipping costs about $38, are 4,000 yards. I could get 80 potholders out of this one cone, doing it in these different methods to make it thicker. Because I have woven it just the way it is, and I've woven it double strand. And it's just like your typical worsted weight yarn. It, it just doesn't have enough um, substance to it for me to really feel that it's a really good fabric. If I were making a baby shawl, or even a shawl for a person, um, I would use just straight worsted weight yarn, but um, I wouldn't make a sweater for myself out of squares because it would be too lightweight. So that's, I'm looking at it as fabric and going all the way from the weaving loops or a Knitting Nancy thick, bulky. If I did Knitting Nancy's in acrylic and then did squares, there are my rug squares. So I'm looking at it all the way from what could go on the floor could, um, to what could I wear. And the reason I'm talking about this loom instead of one of the weave -its, this is my own weave that I painted. 
um, but this is a three pin weave it loom and I have a lot of weave it looms and when you warp them correctly and weave them correctly they're wonderful you pop the square right off without having to crochet the edges and there's only one drawback that I find to this um, they're four inch squares instead of six inch squares so in some ways you have to remeasure or rewrite your pattern for different size squares but the other thing is when you go to sew one weave it square to the next weave it square you're either sewing them loop to loop or you can crochet them but because there are loops every like there's one finished loop here there's one finished loop here there's about four across an edge that you can crochet in that either leaves gaps or it leaves bunches because you have to move down a little bit further to crochet it evenly across so as far as the finishing what I like about this type of bloom is that if you crochet the loops off of here just like a pot holder you have a single crochet edge that you can just crochet to the next square I, I think it leaves a more versatile um, finished square but many people prefer the weave it the other drawback to the weave it is um, when you're measuring out the yarn I think um, a four inch square takes seven yards so you tie on um, your first yarn right here on the first pin you warp it the way they tell you in the directions and then you wrap your yarn around here a certain amount of times so that you can then thread that into a weaving needle in other words you have to cut your finished yarn to the right length before you start weaving the advantage to this is that as you can see I now have it warped in one direction with worsted weight yarn and the weaving method is different you go under over under over under over here is where the working yarn is and you basically pull the yarn like that under over under over under over all the way down and then turn the loom around and pull it the other way so you're using a continuous yarn piece off of a ball of yarn you don't have to pre-cut or pre-measure um, your yarn before you start weaving now uh, regarding Harrisville designs and their cotton designer loops um, this is a three pin knitting Nancy that I made from my pine tree and as you can see my pine tree had a couple of problems but this one piece of wood had a split here and my drill the longest drill bit I have this was too long to drill all the way down to make a regular knitting Nancy so yes this looks a little strange but it works wonderfully and what this is for is cotton floss I could probably also do baby yarn or maybe uh, fingering weight yarn I did drill the holes uh, before I put the nails in and they are glued in there so they're secure so yeah it's a little funny looking with the yarn coming out of the side but what that enables me to do and I I don't have to only use um, a split piece of wood to do that here are other branches with no splits and my drill goes down about my drill goes down about three inches which would bring it here but I can drill down an inch and then drill in from here and make the same type of knitting Nancy as this is and it's almost related to a lucid where when you're using a lucid um, your yarn either goes through the hole and out the back the only difference is that you're turning this around so if it were a lucid or if I use it as a lucid I can just use two pins use it as a lucid and pull it out the back 
Um, but this is my answer to Harrisville's cotton loops because uh, floss is eight yards um, for like a dollar. But I have I have floss. Most people that have embroidery floss have a lot of embroidery floss. It's inexpensive to buy. Um, it takes 16 yards of a finished yarn, either however way you make your own yarn or if you just use plain worsted, it takes 16 yards per square or it takes 36 loops. There are 18 pegs on a side. So you need 18 loops going this way, 18 loops going that way, or 16 yards. Now, before I go further with the yardage, I, what, I misspoke. You don't have to turn the loom. Um, I want you to look up here. Here is when I warped the loom side to side. I started down here with a slip stitch and just went um, to the right, then to the left, back and forth, around each peg once. And that brought me up here, which I then brought the yarn around the corner and and <clears throat> excuse me used the hook to pull that yarn down now with pot holders the way I do it is um, when I'm going under and over I usually do two at a time so there are two going in each direction there are different patterns for it that are usually in the instruction book what I did this time, when I put the hook in under or over to, to move up this way to grab the yarn, I went under or over one strand at a time. Now this is actually similar to triangle looms and a continuous warp um, because I was up here, I pulled the first loop down and put it on the peg and the end of the yarn was still up here. So then I pull the next loop down and put it on the peg and did the same thing. Now when you want to tie on a new color you just, um, this has a kind of a loose stitch but this is a, um, a slip stitch and I've tied on another color and then done that and the red yarn right here I'll just pick up over here somewhere and then when I crochet it off of here I'll just add whatever I have run across like that I'll add to the loop when I'm when I'm crocheting off the edge so it's a continuous warp and you just keep pulling the loops down through um, what you have already warped and when you get down here um, I'm not sure if it'll end here or if it if you'll have a loop at the top, but you then um, use a crochet hook, and I think it's best to start up here and crochet from loop to loop to end off the edge and pull the whole thing off of there, and you will end up with one loop at a corner. And what I do if I'm going to store them is I put a safety pin through that loop so that if the, especially with Jersey loops, if they're going to pull back in, um, I don't lose that loop at the end. So it's, so weaving when you're not using loops is a continuous warp. And um, you can even add two threads or three colors or four colors. See how you just pull the loop down, you know, obviously I'd be going over, under, over, under, and pull it through the yarn, put it on, and my working yarn is still up here. So then I would move it to the next space, and pull it down. So easy to do and easy to work from a ball of yarn or a ball of crocheted strand 
or a ball of lucided, uh, that's crocheted, lucided strand. Or you can mix and match all of them. This is Red Heart Super Saver Acrylic Red Yarn. These are the lucided strands. This is a crochet strand and this is a Knitting Nancy strand. And I think you can see the thickness differences. So you can see why right now I'm kind of preferring the lucided because it's a well, the lucided and the crochet are my two favorites. Unless I'm making um, a rug or something, then I would use the Knitting Nancy. The light single strand worsted, it, they're beautiful squares when you're done. They're beautiful. But they're a little bit lighter than what I want. So, um, but now let's get to yardage because <clears throat> nine times out of ten, that might affect what you choose. And I have to get my notes here because um, okay, I started to say it takes 16 yards of finished yarn to make one square. Now, what I did was measure out 16 yards of the lucided cord. See, I started with 16 yards, and what I ended up with was one yard and two feet. So, because of the stitching, that you're doing the stitching to make it a thicker yarn, you're losing a lot of yardage in the stitching. So on the lucidic cord, um, I would need 160 yards total to then loose it tightly and make one square. And I came to that because um, if I were going to use five colors, I would need... Um, because I'm going, it's five colors in each way. When I lay out 16 yard, um, my original one yard, two feet of lucided cord covers four pegs. So you can see, I had a whole method of laying it out and figuring out the math. For lucided cord, you need a, 160 yards. That is a quarter ounce of yarn in either fingering weight light DK weight or sport weight. So if you measure out or buy uh, one skein of Lime Brand worsted weight uh, woolies is 187 yards. So you need 160 yards. You would then loose at the cord and make one square. So you can see where yarn comes in as Usually when you make a sweater, you buy, say, nine balls of yarn. Well, one ball of yarn of woolies would make one square. So now we're into, um, are you going to use scrap yarns like the Knitting Nancy? Or are you going to loose it a cord, specifically buying a lot of yarn because you want it thicker? Or are you going to go with just the straight worsted weight where it would only take 16 yards to make a square? Um, the next one, so that it's a quarter ounce for either fingering weight, light DK, or sport weight. It's a half ounce if you are going to use worsted weight in a crochet uh, chain per square, a half ounce of worsted weight crocheted uh, chain will make one square. Um, now 16 yards of a worsted crochet uh, chain makes 5 yards 10 inches. So that half ounce of worsted is really 55 yards. So you need 160 yards if you're going to loose it the cord tightly 
or 55 yards if you're going to crochet a chain with a G hook and use that. Knitting Nancy's, I didn't do the yardage on, and plain worsted weight is um, 16 yards. Now, on my cotton, I would count this as worsted weight. So I could measure out 55 yards. It, it's, it's closer to like 48 or 49 yards, but depending on how you're going to edge it, you might need more. So I said 55. I, I sized it up on that one a little. So those are the yardages needed. When you get into the super bulky and the um, loosely lucided yarn, you get um, seven yards of worsted weight yarn will make one yard of super bulky. So whatever yardage you need, in, in this case 16, you would multiply that by seven. And that's the yardage you need for a super bulky, loosely lucided. So that's um, 112 yards. If you want to use a super bulky, loosely lucided yarn. Now that would also make a very thick fabric, but it would be much flatter than the Knitting Nancy. And that might be very good for sweater squares. So there are some options. Now, um, the Nellie B Loom, the one I'm using, is, well, the book, this book is from 1945. And so some of these are going to be dated you know in their design but you can make almost anything with these squares now these uh the it's actually a woman um her name is nell e boyer and obviously she started nellie b and um she has a few crafty type things um, some outdated dolls, like there's a Mammy doll, which I'm not sure how popular they would be now. Um, different dolls, a clown doll. A lot of those things are almost uh, what used to be at neighborhood bazaars and stuff. She has in here directions, different ways to join them and end them. You can make them frilly. It's very uh, full of instructions. And this is just one of the books. Um, another book is this one, Polar and WNC Loop Weaving, with a whole other set of designs and patterns. Now, uh, my other favorite loom is the WNC loom because it's also metal and narrow. Uh, both of these were patented, both brand names, um, if that matters at all. But see how... On this one, those squares, <clears throat> excuse me, are actually laced together with a crochet hook instead of crocheted together straight. They're laced at an angle and then you get some fringe. A lot of different ideas. Now this is similar to my potholder quilt and I didn't even see this before. And this, this actually is a potholder quilt. It looks like on this one they used jersey loops. Look at that. You see, I wasn't crazy after all. Look at that. Number 401. What do they call it? Must be on another page. Um, they've got different numbers. The numbers don't seem to go in order in the directions. That is my potholder quilt. And now we're in the 500, so it must be back that way. Oh, 401, they call it an afghan. Two packages of two, 30 packages, a total of 54 packages. So, 54 packages, but it doesn't say uh, two ounce packages would make not very many pot holders. So 54, let's go with 8.99. $480.60. And 
at $8.99 a package for 54 packages. And here's another one. So now you know, and I, I, I found this book in with my mother's um, vintage <clears throat> knitting patterns. And I had never seen that before. And now I, I know I'm not crazy. Um, so yes, in the 40s, other people thought of potholder quilts. Um, but you can see the money, $480. So, using, even if you use your scrap yarns, and you only need 16 yards to do them in plain worsted, and I gave you the other yardage amounts um, for the other ways, you can have the same effect and do the same thing. I have um, skeins of fisherman wool that um, I would probably crochet first. This is, it, the crocheting strands are very nice. It's a nice weight. It's a light sweater weight. And I, I could probably crochet all of that wool and then do squares and make a sweater out of squares. So it's the Nellie B loom, the Nellie B weaving loom, and um, some of the many options that you can choose instead of um, buying loops. And I'm sorry if those companies are going to get annoyed at people that figure this out, you know, other than me, because um, in a lot of ways that's the problem today, that, you know, you're busy, you work, you have four kids, you, um, somebody needs to make potholders, you run into the store, and you have to pay $20 to make 10 potholders. You know, in the old days... We used to say, well, I don't have $20. <laughs> I have to figure out a different way to do this. So, in a way, um, this is kind of a, a little bit of a, a kudo to my mother as well. Because um, my mother did have four children. And it was difficult for her to keep us all in our projects all the time. And um, my father worked hard and... So, no, we couldn't always stop at Walmart and buy whatever we needed. And we had to figure out other ways to do it. So, thanks, Mom. And I hope um, other people have now kind of a window of creativity where you can use weave -its to buy a weave -it, um, you know, anywhere from $25 to $50 to, you know, they're expensive. You can get one of these for about $10 and do the same things um, and make your own loop type fabric. You can even make a potholder quilt without spending that kind of money. Now two things I want to add at the end here. Um, when I finished weaving this in the regular worsted weight yarn, you end up with a um, here's your beginning yarn you end up with one loose end at this top left corner if you have your loom sitting like that. And what I did was loop it around here. So this peg here actually ends up with two loops on it. And then the tail from one of them I just tied into a slip knot. Um, and the <clears throat> then I started over here and I am crocheting one loop into the next almost like a chain stitch to go around and finish the loom you'll find that as you get over to this corner it'll try to pop up off the loom and sometimes depending on the uh, yarn you're using um, especially you can do this with pot holders sometimes you can stretch it out of shape and keep some of it on a peg over here to keep your tension right but if it pops off the loom um, just go slowly, don't, you know, move it around, and just continue picking up the loops. So that's the one thing. The other thing, the floss that I'm currently using in this little Knitting Nancy is DMC floss. And that's between 80 cents and a dollar a skein. This, however, is a box full of Janlin J-A-N-L-Y-N-N -N, um, floss 
and it's made for designs for the needle. And I'm not sure if I have more than one package in here or not. Beautiful colors in cotton. Beautiful bright colors. I believe you get 36 skeins in a package. You get duplicates of some colors, but it's like $12. That comes out to about 33 cents a skein instead of 80 cents or a dollar a skein. Beautiful cotton colors, and it's designs for the needle or Janlin floss. They might go, it's one company, but um, I think the floss is listed under Janlin for designs for the needle. So that's the floss and this is um, I'm removing this and if you want a very simple um, 18 inch doll apron and I do still have a knitting pattern for a plain apron I have to type up once you remove a square off of there you can um, Put the similar type yarn on a G hook, chain about 8 inches, and then chain into here. Do one single crochet in each stitch across one edge, and then chain the same amount over here. So I'm saying 15. It needs to be about 7 inches long on each side. And what that is, is the this chain here of 7 inches, This that's the tie. This attaches it to the top of one side. Then you do the same thing on the other side. And you have a very simple apron for an 18 inch doll. And this one is going to get this in a moment. Now I've taken it off the loom and the one tail piece that I had to tie um, where the weaving actually ended, I'm just working that tail into, into the edge of the pot holder so I can trim that thread off. Now I had uh, run out of yarn with the one skein so I have a knot on the side so it would be perfect if I could um, use this as the top and use my one single crochet stitch there to hide that knot. I may not be able to do that because when I'm um, now I'm done crocheting the loops together this is um, the end loop and if this were in potholder loops that's what you would end up with and usually how you hang them up on a hook to, to uh, keep them. But because um, I'm going to make this an apron, I will just start a chain um, separately on the hook, and then I'll have I'll use this edge for my top edge where I'm doing one SC into each um, cro crochet stitch right there, and I'll be able to pick up that last loop, and I'll have to hide that knot another way. So, um, let me just do that and I'll put it on her. So there's my chain, my beginning chain, and this is the last loop there. So now what I'm going to do is just um, chain that, chain over that loop. And if it's loose, I'll pick it up again. And when I do the first stitch into here, I'll carry that along until it's not loose and hanging like that. So there's um, seven inches of a chain. I'll do what I just said there. Go right across the top and seven inches of a chain. And there it is. Simple to do. Um, and it will look adorable on her. I'll just put the camera down for a moment and put it on her. goes well with her outfit um, anyway. 
But what a simple, cute little apron for any 18-inch doll. It's adorable. You know, very easy to do. And, you know, part of the crafts that I uh, was taught when I was a child was the way to make things yourself. So American Girl dolls, um, Batat dolls, they're all very expensive. If um, you know of a, a child um, and they can make their own doll clothes, I mean, that's very rewarding for them as well as more economical. This is Red Heart Super Saver Acrylic Yarn.